Okay, so it's been at least two weeks since I did a video on a Motorola smartphone, so I'll say a big friendly all right there to the Moto G22, the latest in a rapidly expanding family of Moto G series smartphones. The Moto G22 just happens to be one of the cheapest as well, costing just 140 quid here in the UK, direct from Motorola or via shop people like John Lewis, Argos, etc. It seems that those on a very tight budget who still want dependable battery life, a camera that isn't completely cack, and of course a lovable stock Android experience, hip hip bizarre. But does it actually deliver on these promises or is it a bit of a Boris? Well, let's whip the Motorola Moto G22 on out of the box, taking a full on tour of the hardware, the software, the gaming, performance, the camera, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, so first up, what is in the box? Perhaps unsurprisingly, a Moto G22, and it's the highly exciting Cosmic Black model. You've also got an adorably weenie 10 watt charger and a USB charging cable. And even though the Moto G22 is super budget, this is a type C USB cable, not micro USB, thank the baby Jesus. And that's your lot, so let's check out the phone. So this wee chap right here is the Moto G22. Quite a hand filler at 6.5 inches, especially as you've got pretty chunky bezels surrounding that display. It's quite a chunky monkey as well, as you can see there, quite flat plastic edges like some other budget blows from the likes of Xiaomi recently. But it's 185 grams, so it's not crazy heavy for a phone this sort of size. As I mentioned before, plastic edges, you've also got a plastic back end as well. You've got a choice of three colours here in the UK. This is probably the most boring of the bunch, the cosmic black version, but you can also grab it in green or blue. I do like how it's a matte finish here on the back end of the Moto G22 at least, so it seems reasonably resistant to sort of fingerprints and grease. You just have to give it the occasional little buffing up to uh, get it looking box fresh again. That camera chassis doesn't jut too far from the RSN, which is always pleasing to see. And the Moto G22 is also water repellent, so all right if it gets a bit of a splashing. So now, software and Motorola has thankfully shoved the latest freshest Android 12 onto the Moto G22, unlike some rivals like Xiaomi with the Redmi Note 11 series, where it's Still running clunky old Android 11. And as usual with Motorola, it is a very stock version of Android as well, so you won't find any clunky uh, launchers sat on top. It is a slightly rejiggered version of uh, stock Android 12 by the looks, so it doesn't have all of the main new features packed in there, and some others are sort of hidden away in a strange place. So, for instance, if you want to change up the actual theme colors based on the wallpaper that you've got set, you'll have to dive into the display settings. You've got various presets here based on the wallpaper color, otherwise you can use this slider to choose them, but you can't actually choose them via the paper itself. However, other Android 12 features thankfully are present and correct, such as for instance, a lot of the great privacy features which alert you whenever an app is suddenly using your camera or your microphone. And you've got a kill switch for both the camera and the mic as well if you want to just blanket deny access to either of those. Yes, yeah, certainly on the, uh, the home customization options here on the Moto G22, very limited. You can set the wallpaper, stick on some widgets, and you've got a small number of settings here. But you can't, for instance, boost the grid so you can have more than four icons in a row, which is a real shame. And you've got all the standard Google apps chucked on here as well by default, but there is no Motorola and Moto Experiences app, which you find on a lot of Motorola G-Series blowers. And that is a real shame because the Moto Experiences app adds all kinds of excellent features to most Motorola blowers, like a dedicated gaming mode, for instance, and all kinds of other great customization options. Thankfully, however, all is not lost because you do still get a couple of those great features usually found in the Moto Experiences app, such as the double karate chop to load up the torch option. That's certainly my favourite bonus mode roll a bit, that's for sure. And you also have an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into the G22's power button, so just a quick tap of that and things load up, albeit not particularly impressively fast. We kind of get there in the end. And then you do also have face unlock as well for whenever you can't use that fingerprint sensor, and this actually seems faster, if anything. And thankfully, Motorola hasn't skimped on other features you'd expect to find, even on a budget handset like the G22, including NFC support for your contactless payments. And on the storage front, you've got a choice of 64 or 128 gigs of space here in the UK. And that is expandable via microSD memory card up to a further terabyte as well, which is great to see. It's also great to see a separate memory card slot to the dual SIM slots. All right, so let's have a bit of a crack at that 6.5 inch display. And it is, of course, basic IPS tech, like pretty much every smartphone you'll find at the sub 200 pound price point. And certainly after watching a good bit of Disney Plus and Netflix and everything, yes, this is a budget display. There's no denying that. Colors aren't particularly lifeless. They're reasonably poppy for an IPS screen. 
but the contrast is pretty weak, that's for sure. Don't expect any dazzling HDR style visuals here. Viewing angles also less than stellar, so not fantastic if you're gonna be trying to watch a bit of Disney Plus or whatever with a great mate sat beside you. You know, you'll find the picture darkens pretty fast as you tilt the screen away from your face. And yes, it's on the HD plus 1600 by 720 pixel resolution, not full HD plus like some rivals you can get from the likes of Poco at this price point, but the detail levels are strong enough to just kick back with some YouTube or Netflix or whatever. I wasn't particularly put out. And on top brightness, not exactly super powered either. So when there is a strong daylight, there will be a bit of squinting action involved. And that wee selfie cam up top as well, quite a, a big one, certainly. Uh, so it does kind of intrude on the action a bit when you do go full screen, but not to a horrendous degree. If you dive on into the display settings, you can have a bit of a play around with the color output to a limited degree at least. However, it is good to see that the Moto G22 screen does support 90 hertz refresh rate as well, and it does have an auto mode, so it can scale up and down between 60 and 90 based on what you're up to. With the audio, it is sadly just a mono speaker setup like a lot of rivals again at this budget price point, just a bottom mounted speaker there. But is it any good? Let's find out. Unlike the humble netbook, for instance, which had a shorter life expectancy than the average lemon, Chromebooks are still going strong. So on that maxed out volume, uh, certainly got a bit of punch to it. It's quite loud, uh, not particularly clear. Of course, the quality isn't fantastic. Again, pretty standard for a budget blower. Be fine for you a bit of Netflix and or whatever though. And the good news is you do have a headphone jack stuck way up top here on the Moto G22. So you can get plugged in if you want to. Otherwise, you've also got Bluetooth 5.0 support if you want a bit of that. No Dolby Atmos support or anything like that though. Pretty basic stuff. Now as for the performance, well, the Motorola Moto G22 is powered by the fresh new MediaTek Helio G37 SoC. And that seems to only be found on this here Moto G22 smartphone and also the upcoming Moto G Power 2022. And it's backed up here on this Motorola blower by just four gigs of RAM as well. So pretty basic performance as you would expect and as emphasized by this very low Geekbench score. That said, the Moto G22 will certainly suit anyone who just wants a smartphone to, you know, check their emails, browse the internet occasionally. You may just occasionally have to be a bit patient as your apps take a little while to load up or whatever, uh, but otherwise fine. Of course, if you're looking for a handset to do some gaming, I would highly recommend bumping up your budget a little bit or looking elsewhere to maybe one of the Poco devices instead, because even the likes of Call of Duty Mobile running on low detail settings, not the finest gaming experience I've ever had. The touch responsiveness of that display isn't particularly fantastic, certainly not well suited to fast paced multiplayer games like Call of Duty, PUBG, etc. So I did find myself getting my ass handed to me by annoying little school children over and over again, like even worse than I usually do. And there's no 5G support here on the Moto G22, but again, that's pretty standard for this sort of price point. You'll have to bump up your budget closer to £200, get something like the fresh new Redmi 10 5G or there's a couple of Infinix options around that sort of price. I gotta say though, when it comes to battery life here on the G22, there's only one word for it and that is bloody Nora. This thing just does not want to die. It's got a mighty 5,000 milliamp capacity battery stuffed inside of it and the combination of that and the fact you've got that energy efficient MediaTek chipset and the fairly basic HD display means you'll get around 10 hours of screen on time per charge before this thing finally bloody bites the bullet. And yes, that screen on time does include gaming, camera play, video streaming, whatever your merry little heart desires. So if you want a smartphone, you're only going to have to charge up once every couple of days or so. Job friggin' done. Of course, on the flip side, the Moto G22 also takes a bloody age to charge back up again because it only supports up to 15 watt fast charging, fast charging, and there's only a 10 watt adapter bundled in the box. So let's finish with a squint at the quad lens camera tech here on the back end of the Moto G22, headed up by a 50 megapixel primary sensor. Motorola's camera UI is uh, pretty feature packed, has to be said, offers lots of different bonus options and settings to play around with. So for instance, you can stick with the four in one pixel bin in and get yourself a 12.5 megapixel a photo. Otherwise you can boost the resolution up to the max 50 meg if you want. You've got a beauty mode if you want. It doesn't look like you've got any of those Motorola AI features found on the more advanced models, but lots of bonus camera bits, including a portrait mode, night vision modes. You've got a dedicated pro mode on there too. 
it's pretty simple stuff compared with some others, but you can mess around with like, so the white balance, the ISO levels. And snapping away on full auto mode here on the Moto G22, you can expect sort of reasonably accurate color reproduction as long as the lighting conditions are good. Certainly if you're shooting indoors in more ambient lighting, I did find my pics came out rather warm. Definitely a strong yellow tint to everything that was going on there. But yeah, outdoors in a natural daylight, you can expect some pretty crisp detail. The only other problem I had really was that the focus kind of crapped out on me a few times and really struggled, especially when my subject was quite close to the camera lens. But even at night time and in low light, you can expect a reasonable amount of detail in there, not too much grain. The results are pretty impressive for a 140 quid handset. You've also got yourself an ultra wide angle shooter on here. It's an eight megapixel effort. And yes, this is pretty basic stuff. You can expect the color accuracy to take a serious hit when you swap to this one. And if you try using it at night, definitely very murky, grainy results. You've also got a very basic two megapixel macro lens if you want to get really, really close to your subject and uh, a two megapixel depth sensor. If you want to shoot a bit of video, you can do that at full HD resolution, otherwise drop it to 720p for whatever reason. And again, shoot outdoors where the lighting conditions are okay and you'll get respectable enough results for a budget blow. Detail levels are fine when you chuck it up on a big screen to play it all back and the color reproduction in too bad. Of course, if you are shooting a video inside, then you can expect much grainier, not so attractive results. And then finally around front, you have a 16 megapixel selfie shooter, which again, not exactly ideal for your Instagrams and all of that, but it'll do the job if you just want to take a couple of, couple of simple selfies with the fam or whatever. Don't expect natural skin tones and strong light can throw it off a bit, uh, but otherwise, you know, absolutely fine with the portrait option available too. And using that more front face and selfie cam, you can shoot up to full HD 1080p footage and uh, the sort of audio qualities okay absolutely fine for you know your bit of skype and zoom and something like that so there you have it that in a nutshell my lovelies is the motorola moto g22 available now in the uk for 140 quid and as you can see there if your priority is battery life a nice stock version of android just a simple overall ui and everything then you know pretty much job done for an affordable price point. Camera certainly impressed in some ways, such as those low light environments, although the focus not entirely reliable has to be said. Uh, and of course, if you are going to be doing a bit of gaming on the side, then you'll want to bump up your budget. Maybe try something with a bit more grunt like a Poco smartphone. Anyhow, that's what I reckon of the Moto G22. It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.